Welcome to part two of this special edition of our Three Minute Trend Talk for Tuesday, May 16th, 2023. I'm Mark Scheffler, CEO and founder of Appleton Group. Well, as I mentioned last week, there is a topic that's likely to be in the headlines a lot over the coming weeks and months, and that's the issue of the U.S. debt ceiling, which is the maximum amount of national debt authorized under current law. So what if Congress passes a spending bill that would result in an increase in the national debt? Well, since World War I, that very situation has happened more than 90 times. And in every case, every single one, Congress voted to raise the debt ceiling. The only time that didn't happen right away was in 2011, when a faction of House Republicans, known as the Tea Party, voted instead to not raise the debt ceiling, which forced the Treasury to voluntarily suspend debt payments for the first time in American history. And although the U.S. government did not officially shut down, it did cost us our AAA credit rating. So what happened to the markets the last time debt payments were voluntarily suspended? Well, on the first day, the S&P 500 fell more than 6.5%. The following day, the Fed stepped into lower rates and the market rebounded more than 4%, all of which was actually gone on the very next day. In total, the S&P 500 fell by approximately 15% from top to bottom in just a matter of weeks. But once an agreement was reached to raise the debt ceiling in exchange for shared spending cuts, the market quickly rebounded back toward break-even. That drama was short-lived, and I would expect that if the debt ceiling were not to be raised this time around, the same kind of volatility would occur. I think it's interesting that Appleton Group's current market posture happens to be pretty neutral, with approximately 50% invested in equities and the other 50% invested, ironically, in the U.S. Treasury money market. I say ironically because if the U.S. were to permanently default, it would be treasuries that would be immediately impacted. But looking back to 2011, it was actually very short-term treasuries that held up the best. Markets often tell us the unvarnished reality of any economic situation, and of course everyone knows that the debt ceiling is looming. But the bond market isn't flashing any kind of warning sign right now, and so we'd be wise to take it at its word that if there were to be a default, it would be short-lived. Why short-lived? Well, because the economic fallout of a protracted voluntary default would be dire. In a permanent default scenario, every bank, every credit union, and probably every insurance company in America would be immediately insolvent. Why? Well, because all lending and most insurance pools invest their reserves either exclusively or heavily in government debt. Credit would freeze, mortgage loans would be immediately called to cover bank reserve losses, and business lines of credit would probably also be locked. So security payments would be suspended, our military staff wouldn't get paid, and commerce would grind to a halt. Now, I can't imagine for a moment that the political pressure on the small handful of congressional representatives supporting default wouldn't be crippling. If push came to shove and a default were imminent, cooler heads would prevail. A permanent default should be unthinkable. It's completely unnecessary. No good can come of it. And no matter how noble a conversation about economic sustainability is, a default is simply not the way we get there. We're a little more than two weeks away from the June 1 deadline set by the Treasury, and I believe that a resolution will probably go right down to the wire. So stay tuned. And remember, if you're not yet a client of Appleton Group, come on over. You are welcome here. And until next time, I'm Mark Scheffler, urging you to never miss a turn.